Hey there, good morning team. Chemistry coach coming at you. So we just beat you up in the last video uh, looking at uh, delta H. You know, we introduced the enthalpy term, um, you know, versus delta U under, you know, are we under constant volume conditions, constant pressure conditions, how we use delta H reactions as conversion factors and all that wonderful fun stuff. So you're going to be doing that a lot when you get into thermal chemistry in first semester of general chemistry and thermodynamics in second semester. So what I want to do is just a kind of a quick little blip into the future to see how we're going to be determining those values of heats of reactions or the change in enthalpy. Um, in the laboratory, obviously, we're going to be mostly under constant pressure situations. I guess we could design one that's constant volume, but you don't see that as common. You probably only see that if you're a chemistry major, kind of the junior, senior level, maybe if you take physical chemistry. I survived PCAM all, <laughs> right? So what I want to do is look at how we can determine heats of reaction values, which we can then use to do stoichiometry calculations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so we'll look at experimentally first which you'll probably do both in first and second semester general chemistry and PCHEM and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then we'll look at some theoretical ways of doing it. So just, to, I'm not gonna go in details, I just wanna introduce to you where we're gonna be headed or maybe, maybe we've already looked at some of these in the past. So experimentally, we're gonna use something called a calorimeter. You probably heard that term, right? Thermometers, right? Measure temperature, barometers measure per atmospheric pressure. Uh, manometer measures the pressure of a specific gas, you know, relative to atmospheric pressure. And a calorimeter is gonna be used to measure heat flow. Of course, that's kind of important when you're doing thermochemistry. Hey, hey, we wanna know the heat flow between system and surroundings, or if it's an isolated system, right? That that system, since if it's isolated, the, the heat can't escape to the surroundings, so the system's temperature will increase if it's exothermic or decrease if it's endothermic. So let's look at, uh, again, a calorimeter. And this is the main thing we're gonna use, right? Following the you know, first law of thermodynamics, right? Heat's gotta go somewhere or whatever. So if we have an open system, right? The heat lost by the system, uh, you know, no, you know, the, it would go to the surroundings, right? So the negative value would be the same numerical value, but negative for one, positive for the other. But if we have an isolated system, which is what a calorimeter is, usually it's styrofoam at kind of undergraduate levels, maybe something a little more fancy pants if you're at higher levels. Um, so that heat can't flow between the system and the surroundings. So commonly we use, you know, we just kind of say system and surroundings, define them uh, kind of in a, you know, off the cuff kind of way. But realistically, because the, it's the calorimeter is isolated, we'll look at this in detail later when we look at these different types of calorimeters. The system, if it's exothermic, the temperature will go up. We can measure that temperature. And then to get to the delta H values, right, the Q of the reaction in the scenario, we have to go, okay, well, what would it take to get the temperature back down to its original value, right? And so we, did, we calculate the delta H's that way. You get the same value either way. But the since we're restoring the system, in this case the calorimeter, back to its initial temperature, whether it went up for exothermic or down for endothermic, the negative of that value will be the heat of the reaction. We'll just say Q reaction in this scenario. So we're going to break this down into two different types. I'll do one example of each, but you know the, the, the fundamentals are the same. So for a bomb calorimeter, ooh, these are so much fun. I didn't do that until my junior year as a chemistry major uh, in, in PCAM, physical chemistry. We got to run a bomb calorimeter. They're a little expensive. So we'll show, show you a picture of one of those. It's kind of fun. Now, remember from the last uh, video, if we're under constant volume, there can't be any PV work going on. So that directly, the heat flow at constant volume is the change in internal energy, which is the change in the enthalpy or the heat of reaction. And then for coffee cup calorimeters, which is more what you'll do at an undergraduate level, kind of the cheaper styrofoam versions, um, we're at constant pressure in that scenario. And so the heat flow uh, we can use to measure the uh, heat of, the heat of reaction is the heat flow at constant pressure. So we'll do one example of each using this as our basic fundamental from the first law of thermodynamics. So that's experimental. Let's look at some theoretical ways. So maybe we don't have a calorimeter right with us, or maybe we just want to do a back of the napkin calculation or something to get an estimate of a delta H reaction that we can use. Let's look at some three theoretical ways we could determine it without actually measuring it in a laboratory. Be right back. Okay, let's look at the three theoretical ways, theoretically, uh, that we can determine delta H values. Now, the first one we've already done, we've already looked at, so I put a little check mark right there, right? Boop, boop, done, yay, we don't have to do that one again. But just to review, 
when we looked at we're looking at Lewis structures and double tri double and triple bonds and bond lengths and bond energies, right? There was a table of bond energies that we used. Right? Remember that from one of the prior chapters? And it just tells, you know, double bonds, you know, take more energy to break, you know, than single bonds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but again, those were approximations. They were averages over, you know, those uh, those bonds in different uh, species. Uh, so this is more, it's not quite as accurate as using thermochemistry and thermodynamics. So it's a little more of an approximate value. But if you just take the total bond energy to break all the reactants, minus the total bond energy to form all the products, right? That's not how it works in the real world. Not every bond breaks, right? But theoretically, you can get a pretty decent estimate of the heat of reaction, um, which, you know, tell you if it's exothermic negative or, or endothermic positive. We talked about those in one of the last videos. Um, but yeah, hopefully that rings a bell. Blow a little dust out of your brain. Whoo, hey, I remember that. So I won't be reviewing this one again. Uh, technically, it's, that, that's covered in more of the bonding chapter. But we will be getting into, I'm going to cover the calorimetry first, you know, bomb calorimeters, then coffee cup calorimeters. And then we're going to look at uh, a little more accurate uh, estimates of the enthalpies uh, of reaction, heats of reaction, using enthalpies of formation. You'll see this little not symbol with a sub F. Don't worry about it right now. I'm just letting you know we're going to get into that. We're going to do a whole video on what's the enthalpy, standard enthalpy of formation and how we can use tables of those to calculate heats of reaction, which will be at standard conditions. Oh no, we're going to have to introduce what that means. And then thirdly, probably one of the more common ones you'll see is using the infamous Hess's law. Now we've already looked at this a little bit where we combine equations together to get overall equations. Well, we can, we can throw numbers with that. We're gonna find out there's some really neat mathematical rules that allow us to figure out the heat of reaction that's unknown for this reaction, which is just a combination of maybe two, three, or four other reactions. And we'll find out mathematically, we can figure that out. It's like a little game, a little logic puzzle. They're kind of fun. Once you see how to do it, it's actually a lot of fun. So we'll go through those five things, right? Bomb calorimeters, coffee cup calorimeters, experimentally measuring heats of reaction, uh, already covered bond energies. Then we'll look at uh, standard enthalpies of formation and how we can calculate delta H from that. And then Hess's law. And we're done with this chapter. Woo -woo! So just a quick little intro video for you. We'll see you in a little bit for bond calorimeters.